KPEL. Welcome to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPEL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku. Here we talk about all the food happenings around Acadiana. If you like food, tune in. You might learn something new. Okay, I'm a little freaked out right now because it's 6 o'clock and it looks like it's midnight outside. And I'm just realizing that I'm no longer going to be able to take my daily walks to work anymore <laughs> um, unless like I put on a lot of reflective clothes to, to walk home or like a flashlight or something because it is crazy dark outside. Uh, Rob Kirk- Kirkpatrick is joining tonight as guest co-host. I am so cool. excited because I've been wanting you to co-host with us because you always text me because you, you yes. listen every Sunday. You always text me uh, show ideas. You know, I, I always listen. I'm it's one of those situations like I'm always a huge fan mm-hmm. and I always listen. We listen in the car because normally it's like the most Cajun thing that we do is go have lunch <laughs> at the same place every Sunday. And in it's Church great Point. in Church yeah. Point. Uh, we go up to Moa Madge's house and that is just kind of where everyone goes. Even if you have something else to go in life on a Sunday, you end up swinging by there at some point. It's the place we see everyone. It's great. We normally time it out though. So we can be back uh, in the car like six, uh, six o'clock, yeah. or so, six Oh five. So Really excited to be here tonight, and you're right. It is pitch black outside. It was like 5.41 when we got off the interstate, and I, I turned to my wife and said, this is what picking up the kids from school is going to be about. It's yeah, terrible. Yeah, it's, it's so dark, but it also means that the holidays are upon us. Halloween has passed this week. Um, I got no trick-or-treaters, and I feel jilted. Did you really get zero? I got zero, and my apartment complex, I moved into a new apartment complex, I was really excited. They had these little things that you could hang on your door to let the kids know that you're participating in trick-or-treating. Yeah. And she said that they normally do okay. get some. I bought a nice big bag. I talked about it last week. A $10 bag of the bougie candy, yes. um, but yes. not in full size. The they were candy. fun size, but in case you know I didn't get trick-or-treaters, I would have leftover candy. Well, I got none. So I had this giant bag of candy that I now took to work because I don't want to be alone with it. You know, I'm, I was actually kind of surprised too this year because normally there was like droves of kids everywhere. Now, of course, I'm a parent now, so maybe I see it differently. Yeah. Maybe when I was a little kid, it seemed like it was just mayhem. It was Lollapalooza, you know, on every street, everywhere, people going for candy. Um, I will tell you this, that there was someone... I was trick or treating down in the plains of the Southern Lafayette Parish, but um, you know, someone actually made me dance for some candy in their front yard. I didn't mind; it was good candy, like yeah. you said. It was that was that expensive candy, so I was happy about it. Oh, my dad just texted me to say that he wants to be known that he listens every Sunday. To oh, you. thanks, Dad. So he was mad. Yes. He was like, we he, he was a little to, jealous. You know what? Maybe it's one of those things. And it's different because they can actually hear your voice. Yes. When I uh, used to live out of state, I worked in news and my mom would say, like, I, for example, I worked in Dallas. I was one of the producers of Good Day Texas. And whenever, doesn't that just sound terrible? It was a bunch of, bunch of chili, bunch of cowboys. That's just <laughs> all it was for four hours every day. Anyway, my mom would say in New Orleans would say, I'm watching the show online. Because if some kind of way it makes you feel like you're okay. And I'm like, Mom, just to let you know, if I get hit by a bus in front of that building, the show will still go on. Oh, you wow. will not know. <laughs> there will be no in- memorandum. There will be nothing. It's It will just happen. It just so. happens. Anyway, hey, Dad. Thanks for listening. All right. Speaking of Thanksgiving, I'm super excited. Um, it's like Fat Kid Christmas. <laughs> um, what are you most excited about for mm. Thanksgiving this year? You know, uh, this Thanksgiving, we're going to do it a little bit different. We always go to Texas to my dad's house. It's kind of our thing. And we have made it like that's the one holiday my dad gets because, you know, Christmas gets too nuts and we're running around to different places here. Thanksgiving is one we can say, all right, guys, everyone expect that we're going to be out of town. We're going to be in San Antonio for the long weekend. We're going to go um, Black Friday shopping in the land of 10,000 targets. It's great. And uh, this year, we've decided actually to move it down to New Orleans, so we're going to be close oh. to everything, and we're actually doing takeout Thanksgiving. Now, trust me, I put up an enormous fight about this because there are some staples that I want, like my grandmother's turkey gravy. The turkeys could be good or bad, depending on the year, but the gravy is always going to be good, but right. I've been assured she's still going to make it. Um, there is Chex Mix, homemade Chex Mix that happens where you actually mix the butter and the Worcestershire and the garlic powder, and you make it. I'm being assured that's still going to happen too. However, there's this place called Check In, Check Out, and it is a po' boy place that during Thanksgiving turns into fried turkeys and sides and all this great stuff. So 
We're going to try it out this year. Okay. You know what? I think we're finally coming around in my family, and I know it happens in a lot of families that decide, like, takeout's a better option for them. We're finally, I think, deciding that not having my mom, my grandmother, and everyone, like, so stressed out and so busy, like, just enjoy the day. Let's just enjoy each other. Let's watch football. Who cares who cooks the food? Um, but we, we're about probably eight to 10 years into the fried turkey craze. Yeah. So that's all we do. Nice. I want to cook so bad. Mm-hmm. Like I'm in, I want to cook Thanksgiving dinner mode this year, but I'm not going to do it. Last two years, I went to Little Big Cup for their buffet. Super nice. And that you can eat a lot of food and then you don't have to clean anything. You just walk But the out. drawback is you don't have leftovers. Mm-hmm. So that's the kind of thing that sucks about it. Well, this year, my parents are in Shreveport. They're going to meet me halfway in Alexandria and we're going to a casino and I'm going to have Thanksgiving buffet there. So not only can I have Thanksgiving food but i can also have pizza and kung pao chicken (laughs) so it's very in the spirit of thanksgiving and that everyone is invited to the table yes and i'm excited for this and just like the pilgrims you can walk out of the restaurant and go play slot machines exactly this is great it's very true i feel like that you know what i didn't even think about the fact that it isn't a casino (laughs) and that it is that is so thanksgiving that's like modern day thanksgiving (laughs) it sounds great to me it's just like the pilgrims but i will say this about thanksgiving it's a lot of it to me is all about family and just kind of being together. Right. You know, and it's one of those things. But I'll tell you, my mother-in-law, for example, she introduced me, I guess, let's see, we're going on like nine years, nine years of me and the family of the turkey roll. And she taught me actually last year how to debone a one turkey. Last, yes. I, I've never done it before. And when I tell you, I just, I love it because it's everything you like about a turkey, but you don't have to pick her on the bones. Exactly. I did that for Christmas last year. Uh, Paul Credo, that is a chef who comes on the show a lot, taught me how to debone a turkey. I bought two of them. And so he deboned one while I deboned one. And I didn't realize that a turkey will make two rolls. Turkey rolls, yes. Yeah, so I had like four rolls. (laughs) Yeah, I had like, I ate on rolls all year. I froze it. But for Christmas, I took it, I wrapped it in bacon it was beautiful. It was so delicious. I was so proud of that turkey roll. And look, if I was to do something, if I could just say, you know, Rob, what would you do? I would have a turkey roll that was filled with the crawfish and rice stuffing from A Bears. Okay. You know, that's inside the stuffed chickens. Okay. If I could have that stuff just smeared in inside, it? roll it up so then it would be like a, a foot in diameter. Like it would just be huge. That'd be perfect. God, that sounds delicious. Gosh, I'm so are excited. We, are we having dinner after this? Man, Gosh. I'm so excited for Thanksgiving. Yes. Okay, so if if everyone listened to last week's show, I talked about how my grandmother came through with a medium and she was upset with me for not baking and not using her recipes. So I started today. I'm doing it on Sundays. I'm not doing it every day because I have a very busy life and (laughs) and I can't do that. So every Sunday I'm going to bake a different item. Some of them will be her recipes. Some of them will not because she had, I went through after the show her recipe book, she has like eight shortbread cookie recipes. And then one of them says the best shortbread cookie recipe. So why do you even have the rest? Exactly. Just burn the rest. That was, that was my entire point. So what makes them different? What makes this shortbread different? I don't know. And I, I didn't, I need to like lay them all out and see what, what's different. But I also was getting frustrated because she had things like a dash of sugar and I'm just like, what's a dash? Yep. But you, know, I, you can buy those. You can buy. You can mes- buy a dash. You can buy That's measuring true. spoons, you can. and they say like a dash, a smidge, a, and they're just novelty because all it just means is a little bit. But we know how these women cook, and men, yeah. you just say just put a little bit. See, I'll tell you this about shortbread cookies. My absolute secret to shortbread cookies: put more salt than it calls for. Oh, because especially the saltiness if you, on yeah, it. If you yeah. put icing, if you ice the cookies, well, then that'll bring out the taste of the cookie even more. Okay, well, that's a good idea. Mm. So today I made pumpkin chocolate chip bread. It's over here, and I haven't and even been able to. And I brought to you some yet. to taste. I smell it first. They're delicious. If it smells like Bath and Body Works, you win. Okay, I don't think it tastes. It's very subtle. Wow, it smells like Kirkland's. Does no, it really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it smells I, great. I like like I. I'm so full though because I did I yeah. did church point lunch, but don't you worry. You're gonna have to text me later You're and tell me later, yes. how it is. Okay, we are gonna take our first break, and when we come back, we have more with Rob. So come back to us. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. Here's another. 
of food. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk. Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. I'm your host Tiffany Deku, and Rob Kirkpatrick is joining tonight. So fun as guest host. And actually, I didn't mention this in the first segment, but he's running the boards tonight, which means we can take phone calls. Tonight, if someone wants to call in and join in on the conversation, it's 337-232-1542. Um, so, yeah, if you want to call and, and... You're putting a lot of trust in me, Tiffany. Yeah, we'll, we'll see I what happens. I said it was easy. The phone never we'll works for me. We'll so. see what happens. Okay, I have been obsessed with curry, like making curry at home. Yep. And I talked to a few months ago about how I accidentally merged Thai style and Indian style curry. Do you know what the difference between the two is? It's all spicy to me. Okay. So Thai style curry is typically made with a paste. They have like red, green, or yellow paste. Okay. And then it's more of a soup and they make it with coconut milk. Okay. So that's that's the difference. Thai, uh, excuse me, Indian style curry is a masala mix. It's like a seasoning mix powder. And then they use tomato. It's mm-hmm. usually tomato base, which I did not know going into this tomato base. And then they'll add like a little bit of heavy cream to it. So that's kind of where that creaminess did. What I did the first time I made curry is I got the Indian spice mix and did the coconut milk. It worked. Yeah. It still worked. It was delicious. Going along with it. Uh, Bon Appetit had posted a slow cooker recipe. I'm kind of obsessed with cooking in my slow cooker. Uh, it was called Indian Spiced Chicken in Tomatoes and Cream. Wait, so that's basically what you just described? It's, it's curry. Indian yeah. curry. Okay. Yeah, it was curry. I was like, okay, way to go, Bon Appetit. Like, you you fancied it up. So this is my big complaint sometimes when I see slow cooker recipes and is that they're not always exact. So Bon Appetit said you needed to get six leg quarters. Well, they probably used organic, free-range, hippie chicken. I was about to say tiny chicken. And it was probably like the size of your hand, yeah. like I a leg that. quarter. hippie chicken because who cares if it's free-range? I, well, it, I'm going to say it does taste better, but they are smaller. <laughs> they are smaller. Angry, they're not angry chickens. I am, I'm broke and <laughs> not living that hippie life right now. So I went to Super One and got a bag of leg quarters that were like 37 cents a pound for a 10-pound bag. Yeah. So got that. Those leg quarters are like monster, ginormous, yes. the Hulk of chicken. They work out. And so it's like twice the size. So instead of doing six, I did five. Really, I probably should have only done like four or three. Mm-hmm. Like, so that right there messed up the recipe in that I had to double everything. Also, whenever you use dried spices in these recipes, these two teaspoons, no. It's like I can never, I, it's taking me a long time to be able to get spicing correct in a slow cooker because it always mutes it. Yeah. And so no matter, if you're looking at a slow cooker recipe, no matter what it says for the seasoning, you want to double it. I wouldn't start out that way. I would definitely put what the recipe says, but know that you're probably going to have to add a lot more Something. spicing. You know how I feel about slow cookers is that, I really like slow cook recipes, but I don't like full meals. Yeah. Because it all tastes the same to me. Like, I'm sure yours was good because you probably cooked your rice separately. Did I you did. Have it with rice? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But these that say, like, you put your raw rice, like you, you put, put your everything chicken, in there. Put, I mean, first of all, you have to know this about me. My favorite thing in the entire world is chicken and dumplings. Oh. And I know how to make good chicken and dumplings. I know how to make, like, real chicken and dumplings where you don't use noodles or you don't use cut up tortillas, but you use actually, like, strips of dough. Mm hmm. Slow cooker versions are just not as good. It just comes out like concrete. Like it just, it all tastes the same. So I kind of applaud you for trying out this tie. Well, okay. So on the subject of chicken and dumplings real quick, you can actually still use a slow cooker as a hack and put your chicken breast in there to cook. Okay. So just and to, then make your to shred it and then you'll put it in a pot later and then do it. Do, do it. So do you dough. know about the, the Miss B's? dumplings no so miss b's dumplings are sold by the garlic oh, bread yes in they the make biscuits sections. okay yes but they yep yeah, so the same place with miss b's but it's strips of dough so whenever you get them all you have to do is put them in the refrigerator for a little while and now in my family like my mom would make dough the night before let them dry on the countertop overnight that's how my grandmother you know, did and it. then you use the pizza slicer and you actually do it when i tell you this miss b's dumplings and i've made it for people here that are huge chicken and dumplings people it tastes Exactly the same for a store-bought dumpling. So 
I can pretty much make a batch. I mean, it's still it's kind of like gumbo. The longer you cook it, the better it yeah. gets. But I mean, you could you can make a good pot in an hour. Okay, maybe an hour and a half. See, I feel like in my family, because my mom makes amazing chicken and dumplings, she uses canned biscuits, and I feel like that dumpling is better than when my grandmother made it yeah. homemade because so I, it her, would it, blow like, up oh, okay. and like it was real doughy uh-huh. and like and then I also it what color was your chicken and dumplings because I found out that in Cajun country they make a chicken and dumpling but it's a gravy and then they also serve it with rice <laughs> okay no that's that is like smothered chicken I'm okay, sorry to tell yeah. you yeah my chicken and dumplings is like a gray color, and you okay, can see that's the you what can it, see the cracked pepper in it. That's what I was trying to explain to her. I was like, "It's a broth," it's and a, she yeah. was like, "What?" Like yeah. she kept thinking I was saying. <laughs> she's like, "But you need to make a roux." I'm like, "No, it's not you, that. You don't make a roux. It's like a it's a broth." I'll tell you. So my mother in law, who I was telling you earlier, she's the absolute best cook that I've ever ma- met, and it, it it comes of just people being hungry at her house, and she always has stuff, you know, and you're. You're like, hey, why don't you need to stop at the store and get, like, I have everything, you know? Well, I'll tell you, her smothered chicken recipe, which I'm sure is just like most everyone's smothered chicken recipe, she knows how I like it, and it's kind of like a big joke in in, in our household that, you know, she's going to make what she wants until I want it. The perception is that I'm the favorite. Right. So if I want it a certain way, that's how I want it, and that's boneless, skinless thighs. Nice. That's just how I love it. Um, the bones do give it such a good flavor, but I am a, I like to just scoop it out and eat it, yeah. not have to dirty my hands too much. Right. But anyway, um, we, another part of the family that makes the same recipe calls it sticky chicken, and they just put yes. less water, and they eat it on tortillas with cheese and sour cream. Weird. So the okay. same exact stuff that we put, and if you think about it, it does have kind of a chili taste, even if you don't put actual chili powder in it. Once you get the peppers and the onions and everything going and get a good solid you know brown color and everything it's just as good it's like shredded almost like street tacos I love, so that's how they have it i love families different variations for recipes like that is so fascinating to me but going back to the curry oh, yeah. so, so the other thing is that it called for four cups of chicken broth well i knew that these ginormous monstrous chicken quarters had so much fat on them yeah. that i was not going to need to add all that so i just put like a cup of chicken broth in there, went to bed, woke up the next, woke up in the middle of the night. I thought it was burning. And I was like, oh my God, I should have put it in there. (laughs) Get in there. It is almost to the top of my slow cooker of fat, like that has like cooked off Off of it. So I was like, perfect. I'm I'm good. did you skim it then or did you? No, you you left left it it in there. And a good curry is going to be like real greasy. So I did have to add more cream to it because it had kind of like. so much. Right. So in the morning, like I took the bones out because like it was already like falling off the bones. It also had potatoes in there. Uh, Added more cream, added more seasoning, let it cook through. It was delicious. And one of my coworkers, she's going to be coming on the show a little later in the month. She's like a world traveler. She's obsessed with Indian food. Like she's had curry in India. She had some and she said it was delicious and it was it was pretty wow. legit is what she said. So. so I don't know about specific curry, but, you know, Indian food is generally like my wife's favorite. Mm-hmm. It was it was one of those things that took me a long time to come around. Kind of like, you know, don't kick me for this, but Greek, like those two th- flavors, they're just so strong sometimes mm-hmm. It just takes you a long time to come around. Okay, so we pretty much reserved Indian food for, like, birthdays, anniversaries, Valentine's Day, when I feel like being nice. Right. And saying, you know, let's forego the rice and gravy, the gumbo places, the fried catfish, and let's go to an Indian place. I will tell you, hands down. So her thing is chicken tikka masala. It's just what she loves. I love it, too. I get it. it's tomato. It's cream. It's not as strong of a curry taste, but Mm -hmm. it's just that deep orange taste. And you could either put it on rice or... You could just dip the naan in it. That's just her favorite. So of all places, two years ago, we're in London for her birthday, and everyone said that chicken tikka masala is like the national dish. It is. And you go to London thinking like fish and chips are going to be on every corner. Oh, and it's, it's like, curry no, everywhere. It's all Indian. Yeah. So you're in this little area um, near this place called the Apple Market. No, not the smartphone, but it's just this little place in northern London called Apple Market. And there was this awesome street and it was lined. It probably had 20 Indian restaurants. And when you walked in, they were super tight. The You sat on these benches that were really low to the ground. So you were already like in this experience. Well, on every square inch of the wall was these framed pictures. This place had been open since like 1920. Oh, wow. And guess what? The Indian, you know, 
India was a was a part of the United Kingdom forever, and I think it still is part of it. It is a sovereign country, but it's still one of the Commonwealth countries. So they are part of the parades. They are part of every royal wedding. There's going to be a delegation of Indian nationals who live in London who are part of it. So there's a huge part of the culture there. And you know what? For the first time, I tried it, and it was magnificent. I mean, wow. it's one of those meals they don't even take your drink order. Because when you look around, I mean, people might have like certain like Indian beverages, but they're like, don't have a Diet Coke. Don't have anything with this. Like the food is that good. Just have water. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've kind of been changed. So yeah. now I, so now I really like it. But you kind of have to go to those places and have that great kind of first experience to really love it. Have you been to Bismala? We have been. I'm so obsessed with them. Yes. It's so, so good. And I like the casual nature of it because yes. it's kind of like... Um, what is it? Um, La Morencita is mm -hmm. this the the Indi or not the um, the Mexican grocery that's yes. down um, on Ambassador near I ten? We go there time to time at lunch just because it is so casual. You aren't you don't you hate to go somewhere and feel like you're an outsider and you don't know how to order and that they're judging you because you don't know what things right. are. But that's another place. Bismala is the same way as that, where it's just it almost feels like a grocery store that just has really good food. It's delicious. The chai there is it's some of the best chai tea. And she kind of told, like, she's not going to tell us everything yeah. that's in it. But she kind of like, she was like, oh, it's just tea and, you know, the different spices. And I'm like, no, no, there's there's something else in there. But it's delicious. And the biryani yeah. is just, oh, man, it's so good. I'm a, And then I learned, Heaven, who's coming on the show, taught me this. I didn't know why they served yogurt on the With side, mm -hmm. and she said, no, it's because it's typically very spicy, which I don't make my curries. I try not to make them that spicy, and the yogurt is best at cutting the spice wow. in the curry. Kind of like they say, drink milk. Right, you know, exactly. It's a yeah, the they thing. said it's like thicker, and it'll like coat the my tongue gosh. more. So, All right, well, you've just like planned my upcoming trip. I think I'm going to go have to find some Indian food while I'm on the They're road. They're open. They're open after the show. So right. you have to go check it out. All right. We are going to take another break. And when we come back, we have more with Rob. So come back to us. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 k -Pop. She puts the wow, mmm, yum into words. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie herself on News Talk 96.5 k -Pop. Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPEL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku. And joining tonight as guest co-host is Rob Kirkpatrick. Thank you. Thank you. We are taking phone calls. If you guys want to join in on the conversation, it's 337-232-1542. Rob, you just got back from Chicago, which Bon Appetit just voted the food city of the year. I would agree. So I would completely agree. We have to it. talk about deep dish pizza. Okay. So let's just start there okay. because that is something that you cannot get in Lafayette. Yes. We do not have a pizza like that here. Mm -hmm. And just tell us how delicious it was. All right. So first of all, um, the first night we were there, we went to this place called Giordano's, which everyone talks about Giordano's. And what I gather, they have like 40 locations uh, in Chicago and around. So what I gather is kind of like Giordano's is to... Deep dish pizza as Copeland's is to Cajun food. Okay. I mean, like, your local people are going to say, oh, Ew, no, yeah. like, that's not where you go. But that's where but the tourists go. But when you go, go into it, you're a tourist. And you know what? It is a great option. And I wouldn't say it's a tourist trap because it was really good. You know, it wasn't it wasn't too fake. But, um, you know, we went in. We kind of looked at it. I was starving because it was, like, the whole day of travel. And then, you know how that goes. You go hours and you don't eat and everything. So, uh, luckily, this year, Donald's was right across the street from the hotel. So, we go... And we walk in, and the lobby is full, probably 50 people. And what we have in front of us is a wait. It's two things, wait list and pre-order. It's two people. So we're kind of like, all right, that must mean like take out and, you know, wait for a table. So we stand in line, probably 10 minutes. We get up to the front. They say, okay, how many? Two. All right, it's going to be an hour and 10 minutes for a table. Stand in this line now to pre-order because that's how long it takes to cook right wow, now. Wow, okay. And so we were like, all right, this is fine. Uh, so we did it. We went through. And, of course, just just by nature, I knew I was starving. I said, like, let's get a large. Like, we'll split a large. And and the guy was kind of like, have you been here before? And we, we were <laughs> he like. He knew right away. We were like, no, but whatever. And he, he kind of pointed over to a table and was like, so that's a medium. And, you know, and it looked like an all right size. So we were like, we didn't have a hotel, like a refrigerator in the hotel. So we said, you know, let's just get a small. We can always come back 
if we want to. All right, so we did the, the pre-order thing and everything. So luckily we found a spot at the bar. We drank, had fun until the table was ready, which is actually a really good concept because you didn't have to wait an hour for your table and then an hour for uh, deep dish pizza because think about how long it takes. Yeah, it's really that is thick. actually super smart. It's a really yeah. hot oven, but it's super thick and it does take about you know 45 minutes to an hour. So um, we got our seat and it was great because like 10 minutes after we had our you know, our drinks, the food, the pizza was ready that we ordered an hour before. So it was great. Um, here's the deal with this. You remember when you're growing up and your your grandmother says, like, stop opening the oven or the cake's never going to cook? Mm-hmm. It's the same exact concept. Oh. So if they're slow, it only takes 45 minutes to cook one because they can leave it closed. But when it's super busy and they work with multiple ovens, they have to keep opening it up so the heat leaves. It extends the amount of time. Um, it was awesome. I actually posted a picture um, on the KPL Facebook. If you go see it there, um, you know, with a little teaser that I was going to be on the show tonight. Uh, it's about it looks like a two cake. and a half to three inches thick. Um, and here's the deal. I always thought I wouldn't like deep dish because of the sauce. I'm not a saucy guy. Oh, okay. I don't like a lot of sauce and I don't like a chunky sauce on my pizza just generally. And so I always thought, eh, I'm happy to try it, but I want to see. Uh, turns out the sauce is just on the top. There's just so much in it. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. So here's how you do it. And this, to me, is more of a chemistry project than an art project, okay? You put the dough in. All it is is a cake pan. Nothing fancy about it. It's like a 9, 12, or 14-inch cake pan round. The dough comes all the way up to the top. You line it with with, uh, cheese slices at the bottom. Then you put your meat. Then you put your sauce. Something happens in the chemistry, which I'm not a... I'm a journalism major. This isn't my strong point. But my wife who was with me was, like, really understanding what they were saying. Something about the way the sauce and the cheese interact, it cooks what's right in the middle without burning the dough, even though you're cooking it for 45 minutes. So I'm I'm flabbergasted at how good it is. It's so much cheese, but it's great, and we could only eat half of a small. Wow. And we were starving. So uh, that's Giordano's, and then the next day, we got up, and my wife always likes to plan something I don't know about, especially because it was a birthday trip. So I knew it was going to be a tour, something stupid history, because that's my deal. I love that kind of stuff. We actually ended up going to Pizzeria Une, and that is the place that created deep dish pizza. Yeah, that's what it, yeah. And the whole reason it was created was because there was kind of like this starving artist who lived on the second floor of this building, and downstairs was a bar. The bar lost its lease. They decided to make something. Um, and Chicago didn't have pizza at all. New York had pizza, but pizza was not something you like sat down and ate. Pizza was something that, you know, the steel workers like just picked up because you could pick up a slice, you can walk with it, totally contained, don't need a fork and knife, you just go. But they kind of thought, who would ever sit down like to eat pizza? Interestingly enough, this starving artist was from Texas and he wanted to make something Tex-Mex. He wanted to make tacos. And everyone, all these investors that came in, all these suppliers were like, People don't get tacos here. It wasn't like now where you can get pretty much any type of food in any big right. city. No one did it. So basically they found a way to put pizza dough and make what was originally supposed to be a casserole. They never even called it pizza. They put the sauce on top, filled it up with all the vegetables. That's how it happened. Now here's the deal about deep dish pizza, which is so cool. Whatever you put below the sauce cooks because it steams. Whatever you put above the sauce it gets crispy. There's no right or wrong way to do it. It's just whatever you want. So at this Pizzeria Une place, they do uh, four days a week, a 40-person cooking class. So we actually took the cooking class oh, wow. on okay. how to make how it. How to make it. Nice. And, um, it, was, and it was just so enlightening because me, I, was, I didn't think I was really going to like it. I love pizza, but deep dish pizza seemed to be a little bit too much for me. And I'm, I'm very basic. I don't like a lot of vegetables. Truthfully, I'd rather no vegetables just because I like a good meat. Like I like, mm-hmm. I just like that taste. So uh, we kind of went through. So basically... If you like onions on your pizza, do you want them crispy or do you want them soft? If you want them soft, you put them below the sauce. If you want them crispy, you put them on top. It was the coolest, you know, historical thing we could have ever done. I would highly suggest it to anyone who goes there just because it's good to see how it happens. Well, so then she points right across the street and there's Pizzeria Due. Somewhere along the line since they created, since they, you know, started this up, the two siblings split off. They love the location. So one's across the street. It's all the same company, just two different branches of the same exact restaurant. But anyway, it was a really cool thing. So, you know, everyone has their favorite, but it's kind of like here saying who has your favorite gumbo. Right. It's just different. Uh, They use cornmeal crust, which is really different. We actually got to tour the kitchen, which was really awesome. Um, The big thing about Pizzeria Une, the average um, 
years of experience of someone in their kitchen is 32 years. Wow. The, uh, here's the deal. When they hire you in the kitchen, they teach you to be a dishwasher. It's up to you. There's like six other positions in the kitchen, but it's up to you to learn if you want to. So like it's only the real serious ones that want to know. The last person that was promoted to be um, someone who actually puts pizza in the oven because there's no way you can constantly check it. When you have that many in there, you have to know when it's done by looking at it. You can't you can't temp it. You right. can't do anything. Um, the last time someone was promoted at that restaurant was 12 years ago. Wow. The old, the person who's been there for the longest had been, has been baking the pizza for 45 years. So what's going to happen, though, like when they retire or, or pass away? Well, like, hopefully those people are there. Are there going to be the somebody that doesn't want to be a dishwasher? And Well, you know, it seems like they kind of work their way up. You're a dishwasher, then you okay. might throw things in the fryer, then you make the dough. So there are several positions okay, along so the way. They, okay. you did literally the top two, the president and the vice president, the person who puts the dough in, the person who actually makes the pizza and assembles it. But... It was so cool, Tiffany. You would, you'd freaking love it. Yeah. Um, they'll actually sell you one of their pans, but it's not a new pan. It's like one of their pans that they use, so it's dirty and black. She, the the person who gave the um, gave the class uh, had been working there for about fifteen years, and she was one of the managers. And she said, "Look, if you want a new pan, I'll tell you. Just go to like any store. Go to Bed Bath and Beyond, get a cake pan. But the whole thing is that the pan is seasoned and everything else. You have to use a lot of oil in it too, because oh yeah, you just you can't have it stick to the bottom. So um." It was really great. Deep dish pizza all the way. So much fun. I posted a picture, of course, of the Cape Hell Facebook page. So do you want to talk about the other food there, too? Yes. You want to take a break first? No. Oh, we have some Let's, time. We have, we we have, have time. time. Yeah. So, um, okay. Uh, one day, uh, I guess it was the Sunday, the Saints were playing the Bears. We just happened to be in Chicago. So what better place to, like, taunt right. you know, opposing team fans but to find a good bar? Well, so we looked for the best burger. And about a month before we were there, so I guess uh, about six weeks ago now, um, the best burger in Chicago was voted at this place called Safe House. All right. Safe House, all we heard was that it's like a spy theme. That's all we heard. Um, I read about it on TripAdvisor. It had like all five star reviews. It was awesome. People had loved the experience, whatever. Cool. We wanted something easy, wanted a good burger. Fine. So we go. Uh, the Uber drops us off in place in front of this place that doesn't have a sign, but it has an address. All right. Okay. So we walk in uh, to a, a 10 by 10 room about like this that looks like a government office building. Um, and someone's just working at a computer, like literally like just like typing away. And I kind of walked <laughs> in and was like, um, excuse me, is there is there a restaurant here? We're looking for safe house because I don't really get it, I guess, at right. this point. And so she just kind of looked at me and was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I kind of stood there and she was like, come whisper a password in my ear. And I was like, <laughs> okay. So I kind of like walked around. And, I, and of course, the Saints were playing. I said, New Orleans Saints. She was like, not on this day, not on this town. I'm like, all right. She said, if you want to really prove that you're a spy and you want to be in, in this restaurant, I need you to stand against this wall and act like an elephant. And so I kind of look over. Now, now, here's what you have to imagine. I'm a big guy. Okay. I'm wearing a huge jacket. Okay. And I am like, you know, acting like an elephant. Sarah is looking at me like, there's no food that's worth this kind of humiliation. <laughs> let's just go. Yeah, let's just leave. And so she kind of cracks a little bit of a smile, but not really. The person in there is like really mean. And uh, she just kind of nodded her head, opened up. There was a bust of Ben Franklin sitting on the desk next to her, opened up his forehead and pressed the button and the wall opened up and there was a staircase. <gasps> it was like a speakeasy burger it place. It was a speakeasy. So <laughs> as you sort of walk down, there are strobe lights everywhere. There, you can you can hear like radio chatter, and then finally it says like the security check is complete, and you get to a door. So you're shaking the door, you can't get out. You have like a moment of panic because you think you're locked in. Oh to my the god! Staircase. And then another wall pops out, and there's the hostess stand, and everyone in the restaurant is clapping because there are cameras <gasps> in the top, and they, wa oh and they watch. Oh my god! So the ongoing entertainment while you're having lunch there is to watch people come in. Because it's all tourists in downtown, especially on the weekend. Okay, yeah. So no one really knows what they're doing. Everyone does the same outlandish things. And we literally watched the whole time. This person just sits up there and, like, works on a computer. I don't know what she's doing. I don't know if she's on Microsoft Word. I don't know what she's doing, but she's just sitting up there. And it is the weirdest thing because your senses are completely gone when you're in there. You're like, what is all happening? right, I guess I have to go. So anyway, you get to the bottom. It's James Bond-themed. There are, like, interactive things on all the walls where you can watch live drone video. Like, it's just a really cool thing. They call you spy the whole time. And so you have to understand. I mean, you you go to restaurants. Yeah. Can you imagine what my only problem was with the whole thing? 
the food better be good if, if right. We're doing all this if you're stuff. doing all of this, if we're doing all this. Like your food must be crap because right. You know, like obviously your effort is put into you know all this whole shenanigans. So was it a good burger? It was the one of the best burgers I've ever had. Okay, nice. It was served on cutting boards. Nothing that came to the table was on a plate. It was on solid wood cutting boards, and it was literally like stacked brioche bun, thick patties. Um, Wisconsin aged cheddar, applewood bacon, and beer battered onion rings. That's what I got. It was called the M O A B, Mother of All Burgers. Yeah. And then just had the knife in the top. Which guess what? I'm sorry to tell you, any restaurants, you could you got me when you put the knife in the top. I love that. Like I just think it's a cool, it's a cool thing. But I guess I'm a man. So it's like I think a that's serious awesome. burger. Yeah. Like it's like that's when you know it's gonna be serious. So Sarah, of course, it was Sunday around noon and brunch was going on till two. So she had bottomless mimosas and a chicken sandwich, which was out of this world. But it was one of those cool places that the food lived up to the whole shenanigans. Right. And sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes you go there and then what do you have? Like a like a frozen chicken sandwich. And, th- and then it's like you're all right with it, though, because you're like, oh, no, but the experience is so much fun. But the food's terrible. Right. But it's all right. But this one, like the food was awesome. FYI, they continue to call you spy the whole time. You need another Diet Coke spy? Now, how is that burger spy? I mean, like they really treat you as if you're a spy in this underground oh, secret wow. thing. All right, so you get to the end, you pay your bill. It was all like the whole experience was great. It was very James Bondish, um, and they say um, if you want to find the secret exit, it's a dollar, and there's where, there's where the thing is. So it's like a whole separate kiosk where you like swipe a card, it costs a dollar, and you can find the secret exit. So we found it. We ended up exiting like to the hallway of a hotel on the next block, where it looks like a room door. And so they continue it from literally the time that you wow. walk in till you walk out, that you walk out of a nondescript door in a hotel where you just kind of walk up. And you know the, the front desk people have to know where you're coming from. Right. But they just look at you and they're just like, Whatever. have a nice day. <laughs> yeah. And you you kind of leave there like, what just like what just happened? There's no windows because it's in the ground. Like it's in the basement level. Um, but it was so much fun. You would love it. And uh, I honestly told Sarah the whole time, I wish we could pull something like this off in, in Lafayette. You know, or just in Acadiana in I keep general. saying that about speakeasies. Like, we need a speakeasy bar. It's fun. Yeah. You know, those little secret things. There was a place in Dallas when I lived there. It wasn't like a speakeasy, but it was a secret bar called the Treetop Lounge. And it was in the back of a Mexican restaurant called Mi Cocina, which Mi Cocinas are everywhere. There's like six or seven of them in Dallas-Fort Worth. You just walked by the bathrooms in the back, and there was a random staircase. Take the staircase up. They had no signs. It was a separate business. They just, it was word of mouth. I'm telling you, I can't. We would we would go up there every now and again for drinks. Always see NBA players, wow. you know, Mavericks people. But anyway, so yeah, Chicago hands down. We did it at a couple favorites. Um, we are suckers for Grand Lux Cafe. Do you know what that is? No. So Grand Lux Cafe is in like some of the big, um, big like Vegas casinos. There was one we lived in Dallas. There was one in Atlanta. It's from it's cut from the same cloth of like a cheesecake factory. However, all their food is Italian. Okay. And, and yes, it's that huge menu, but you go inside and the decor's over the top. It's very reasonably priced, like for what it is, but it's just a great kind of atmosphere experience. We did that in Chicago. You know, it, we did, really didn't find a bad thing, but once you have pizza for the first two days, because like, right, you're what? like, we made our I own need pizza. salads. Yeah, we, we had <laughs> enough, you know? So anyway, uh, it was great. And I will. I will second that vote, to, you know, to make it kind of food city of the year because that's great. It was, it was just so much fun. All right. We are going to take another break. And when we come back, we have more with Rob. So come back to us. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPAL. Epigenetics and the sins of the father. God said, man said dot com. U.S. colleges, new mental institutions. Close Satan's secret door. God said, man said, dot com. Mummies and the sons of Ham. Alcohol and Christians. Geologists say yes to crucifixion. God said, man said, dot com. Which religion? Which Bible? Quantum physics to Adam's rib. Hours of text and streaming audio. God said, man said, dot com. Pam and I purchased our timeshare in 1979. We went to our timeshare twice a year for years. Boy, I miss those days. In 2012, I lost Pam and knew I had to get out of our timeshare because the thought of going back there was too painful for me and our children. Finally, I found Timeshare Exit Team. They got us out. Time changes everything. Call Timeshare Exit Team today at 844-321-EXIT. 844-321-EXIT. 
TimeshareExitTeam.com. Adopt US Kids presents Multiple Choice Parenting. You accidentally cut your daughter's bangs unevenly. Do you A, line things up a centimeter from her hairline? Man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. No, 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 no. Sweatbands are so hot right now. Everyone's wearing them. Like that basketball player and that other basketball player. B, get spiritual. Mom, where did all the mirrors go? A reflection could never capture our true selves. Huh? Beauty is within? Um. C, look on the bright side. Less time blow drying, more time texting. Or D, show empathy. Mom, you really don't have to... Ta-da! Twinsies! (laughs) I kind of love it. (laughs) As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. And now, the Lafayette Food Junkie Show, served up medium rare every Sunday night. Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku, and we've been talking with Rob Kirkpatrick as guest co-host tonight. So you have something... It's like a dream come true, by the way. Yeah, this is... I'm a huge fan of the show. The show has, like, flown by. It's been, like, two years and a few months since I've I've had KPL under my wing. And I've been wanting to do this the whole time, so I'm so happy we're finally doing it. I know. You right. need, you can come back anytime. I'm okay, sorry. we'll make plans. Okay, so you have something super exciting happening next week. Uh, no, in like uh, less than That's true. Hours. You're leaving at 5 in the morning. Yes. So the whole state is doing this, though, right? Yeah. Because they're state. Okay, so Lafayette Travel is going to New York. Uh, they brought some chefs with them. Um, other areas of the state have chefs going as well. And Rob is going to be covering it for Lafayette, and he's going to be doing a live remote from the event. Yeah, I'm doing the show, uh, Katie and his Morning News, live there on Tuesday. So Lafayette Travel, um, along with several other local CVBs, Convention Visitors Bureau, um, Lake Charles is there, Shreveport, New Orleans, of course, Baton Rouge area. I think Alexandria, Central Louisiana is there, and it's all part of um, LTPA, which is Louisiana Travel Promotion Association. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, which is a, a big kind of pet project of the lieutenant governor. Because, you know, in our state, the lieutenant governor really just oversees tourism. Right. It's people here. Um, so Billy Nungesser is going to join us on the show on Tuesday. And we're really just going to hear a lot about the brand that is Louisiana. People want to be a part of it. We have seen movies be shot here. Um, Tyler Perry is shooting a TV show right now in Baton Rouge. Um, and it has been their permanent set, you know, for two seasons now. Um, it's, so it's really just a really cool thing. Uh, people, of course, ask why in New York? Why not here? Well, this event, it's called Culinary Trails, which there are several culinary trails in our area, like the Seafood Trail and the, they have several of them. The They're Prairie, Trail, yeah, Prairie Trail, um, Red River. Just different yeah. areas that you can go where they'll give you a list of restaurants, you know, kind of all, you know, that fit into the same category. Anyway, 10 restaurants are going up from Louisiana and they are throwing a good old fashioned Louisiana fair Inside one of these posh, you just see it in movies, events. This place is called 404 New York, and it's just this white box. It overlooks the city. Awesome view. They're literally bringing bands. It's literally the sights, sounds, and tastes of Louisiana. Everyone on the invite list, big media, uh, tour groups, airlines, travel agents, just to kind of say, hey, this is what Louisiana is, and it's way more than just New Orleans. It's way more than just February for Mardi Gras. It's all year round. There's always something cool to do. Um, Acadiana, it's obviously really important to the Lafayette travel people just because the the cultural economy, the tourism and everything is number two, you know, in terms of money brought into this area right. just behind oil and gas. So it's going to be a really cool trip. I'm so happy they are letting me go along. I'm bringing yeah. the show there on Tuesday. It's going to be a really cool time. So from Lafayette, Chef Ryan Traha with Dark Roo is going to be one of the chefs. Uh, Chef Holly Getting with Charlie G's. And then we also have Bonnie Bro from St. John Restaurant in St. Martinville, who's Seafood Queen, Louisiana yep. Seafood Queen this year. Uh, Jay Cody out of Baton Rouge is going to be one of the chefs. And also, I do not remember his name. He's from Covington. He, he has made, I've gone to several events where he's cooked. It's delicious. And he's made me want to explore Covington yeah. because they have this really have cool you ever food been? You scene. Know that's where I grew up. No, I did not. It is fun. I actually stopped there on my way to Birmingham uh-huh. my last trip. And I was like, man, I need, you I need to, to go, go here. Yeah, you have to go pretty far off the interstate 
mm-hmm. to find it. But, you know, downtown Covington, there's this area called Lee Lane. It's where all the antique stores are. But sprinkled throughout are these really cool restaurants that are just kind of tucked away. Yeah, uh, I stopped at Cafe Du Monde because mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I have to. Yeah. <laughs> and it was right next to Baco Bar, which is one of the restaurants that I've been wanting to go to. Yeah. It was too early. They weren't open yet. But I was like, man, it's right there. But yeah, Covington has a really cool food scene happening. And then also Isaac Toops, who is from our area, but he has several restaurants in New Orleans. He'll be there as well. So you mentioned about your parents being in Shreveport. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to Maryland's place? Yes. Do you like it? Do you like the concept? What is your feeling about it? So he's from New Orleans. Uh And really, it's about drinking because you go for Sunday brunch, you get a wristband, you pay like $15 and it's like bottomless, whatever you want to drink. Love it. And that's kind of like what it's about. They do have, the food is decent, but there's so many other places in Shreveport that I would recommend to go. But if you're you're wanting brunch, go to Maryland's place. That's what they're known for. So I'm really excited. This New York trip is is pretty cool just because we get to move everything up there. So Mm -hmm. um, six to nine Tuesday morning, we talked to the Lieutenant Governor, um, Alex Labatt, who used to be an an anchor uh, reporter here at KTC. He now leads the social media outreach communication efforts for Lafayette Travel here. He's always really excited about this sort of thing. One of the big kind of forces behind Cray Day when they went up to Michigan. and Yes. And so I hope we'll be doing more and more of this just because it's so much fun. And I have secured a spot. There is at the hotel we're going to be at. We're in Times Square. The rooftop, there's a rooftop bar that's only open in the evenings. But it's going to be like 7 to 10 their time, you know, on Tuesday. I've secured. Someone's going to let me in. I don't know if... I can't confirm or deny if it's going to be a, <laughs> a security person or maintenance or housekeeping or whatever, but we're going to be broadcasting from up there and it's just going to be fun. You know, it's cool to talk about what makes Louisiana cool. I've changed out all the music in the show. It's all Louisiana. It's going to be a really good time. And so they just have to tune in to k on Tuesday morning and it's, it's in New York. Yeah. We'll be talking uh, to a lot of people on and off and also follow all the social media channels, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Follow us over there. You can see everything. Just search KPL News, and we'll update you along the way. But it's going to be fun. Put a bunch of Cajuns all in one place. I hear they're trying to get uh, an Acadian flag flying on the flagpoles over the ice skating rink at Rockefeller Center. So Very cool. We'll see. There's a lot of cool connections between that area up in the Northeast and, and down in South Louisiana. People are really <laughs> interested in it. People like it. People like to come down here from there. So... It's uh, really exciting. Rob, this has been so much fun. Thank I you so much for it. guest co-hosting it tonight. It has been awesome. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming on. It's really uh, great. All right. That's our I'll sh- have to give you an update, by the way, on how this New York thing Yes. Goes. I'm going to be following on social back. media. <laughs> all right. That's our show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Join us next week, Sunday at 6 p.m. This is Tiffany Deku on News Talk 96.5 KPL. And this is the Lafayette Food Junkie Show. Thanks for listening. And as always, happy eating, Acadiana.